Good morning. Welcome to Victory's Vision Christian Church. We use these glasses as our logo. God wants you to see the cross and see the blood of Jesus. That all your faults and all your mistakes are on there. They're not on you. They were on Jesus. When He died on the cross, He paid the price for all your faults, all your mistakes, and all your sins. And that's what we want to teach you, is how to see yourself the way God sees you. Uh, you can go to our website, which is www.victorysvision.org, victoriesvision.org, and it'll lead you to SoundCloud, it'll lead you to Facebook, it'll lead you to uh, YouTube. We have about 180 teachings on YouTube that you can go over. We have a whole bunch on Facebook, which you're on right now. Uh, we want to teach you to build you up and encourage you. You can also send us a, a letter, send us a thing, an email through that website, or you can send us an offering through that website. We have PayPal on there. Or you can send us a check to Post Office Box or Cash, 295 Gilbert, Arizona, 85299. If you've been built up, the Word says, if we sow to you spiritually, you should sow back physically. So that's what the Word says. We want to encourage you to, to support this ministry. Why? Because we teach you how to stand, how to stand, how to have the victory in your life. Today we're going to talk about authority. What is authority? God gave Adam and Eve authority over the world, over this land, over this uh, whole world. Authority. And they lost it. They gave it away to the enemy. And Jesus got it back, and He's given it to us. If you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have authority. So what do we want to start with? We want to talk about fear not. Fear not, we have God's authority. Fear not, we have God's authority. What does that mean? That God gave Adam and Eve an authority to have dominion over the whole world. See this weapon? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not fleshy, but they're spiritual to give you the victory in this life. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to start out with a little movie. What would you do in a case like this, huh? What's going on here, huh? What would you do? Would you panic? Fearful? A lot of fear there, isn't there? A lot of fear. Fear for herself, fear for her little one. But she's a Christian. So what does she do? She uses the word of God. She's quoting the word. And what happens? The spiritual effect of that word takes place against the enemy here that is driving this person. every time, all the time. We need to learn our authority that God has given to us. Amen? The joy of the Lord is there because she had the victory. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. 1 John 5, 4. Authority through faith in Jesus Christ is what we have over this world. Authority through faith in Jesus Christ 
You have to be born again to move into that authority. He, the Bible says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. You're one spirit with the Lord. The authority that Jesus Christ has been given, been given to him is ours because we're one spirit with the Lord. Think about what that means. Your faith can help you overcome what's in this world. And what's in this world is a lot of demonic activity, a lot of spiritual evil in this world. And we could have the victory over that. Mankind's original authority. Listen to me closely. It's out of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. Then God said, God said, let us make man, mankind, in our image, according to our likeness. What does that mean? God is a faith being. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are faith beings, spiritual beings. They made mankind spiritual faith beings first and then flesh. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over all the earth and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. You have authority over creeps. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. Didn't leave any women out, no. He created a male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Subdue it. What does subdue mean? It means to take control over. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. They had dominion. They had authority to subdue the earth, take control, sovereignty over the earth. Yet they are subject to the Father. Subject to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yet, what happened? Huh? What happened? Subdue it means to make subservient and keep it in order. God made it good and we were there and we were to keep it that way. Put it back in place. God... When he created all things, he looked at it and he said, it is good. And he wanted to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. But what happened? Man messed up. Gave his authority away to the enemy. By man's fault, listen to me closely. By man's fault in the Garden of Eden, man gave his authority to Satan. Man gave his authority to Satan. That's male and female. They gave their authority to Satan. How'd they do that? How did Satan receive it? Well, by man putting his faith in Satan's words. And they ate of that fruit. And that fruit has DNA in it. And that DNA affected and changed their DNA. Or something like that. People, well, how can fruit do anything? Well, if you believe the Bible, that's what happened. These two trees in the garden represent two laws. You see this? This is the tree of life. And this is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God said, don't eat of that. This represents the natural realm. This represents the spiritual realm. The two trees in the garden. They had a choice. They could live this spiritual life like they were created to live by and have peace all their life. Or they could end up being under, this is right and this is wrong, according to works. They were tricked into it. And they ate of that tree. And something changed on the inside of them. What changed on the inside of them? That's how Satan got them to believe and walk under that realm. This is right and this is wrong. They're faith beings. When they see themselves wrong, what do they do? They judge themselves by faith. You see, Adam, what did they do? He, they're hiding from God. They saw that they were naked. They were naked before. But what changed? The law they were under changed. The, the law of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil condemned them. Mm-hmm. Why? Why did God make that? Because this is the natural realm. That's what it represents. This is the spiritual realm. That's what it, that represents. There's two realms. The God realm, the natural realm. God created man to live under the God realm, not the natural realm. Do you know that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the cross represents that? When Jesus was nailed to that, he said, it is finished he was nailed here and nailed here and his feet and he couldn't get off to work it anymore. So the penalty was death. The soul that sinned shall die. So he died. But 
He was not under that. He did it for us. And so what happened? Huh? When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're receiving what he did on that cross for you. That means you're dead to that. You're dead to breaking the law of that tree. Remember, these are laws. The soul that sins shall die. Listen to me closely. Please listen to me closely. These are two laws. This is the law of faith. This is the law of sin and death. Romans 6 says, Reckon yourself to be dead unto sin when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He paid the price, so reckon yourself that you're dead to that law. Romans 7 talks about a woman married to a man, and if she goes with somebody else, she's breaking the law of marriage. Mm -hmm. She's committing adultery. But if that man dies, she's free to go with anyone she wants. Well, that's what happened to us. We died in Christ. That's what the Bible says. So if we died in Christ, we're dead to that. And we're alive in a new law. Listen to me closely. Romans 8 says, The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets us free from the law of sin and death. This is the new law you're under. You have to live by faith in what Jesus, his word, in the word, in the gospel message. He who knew no sin became sin, that we may be the righteousness of God in Christ. When you're dead to that, you are now right before God if you're in Christ. It isn't just, there are people out there that believe that Jesus died for everybody, which he did. He died for everybody. But it's not automatic that everybody receive it. You have to receive it by faith. You have to believe it, receive it. Believe with the heart and confess with the mouth. Puts you under here. Baptism is a symbolic thing that shows that you're dead to that and you're born again of the spirit mm -hmm. you got that by man's fault in the garden of eden man gave his authority to satan how did satan receive it by man putting his faith in satan's words job chapter 1 verse 12 job's faith was fear he said the thing i feared most came upon me well what was it that he feared most the lord said to satan behold they're talking about Job. God was bragging on Job because Job was a faithful, he believed and trusted the Lord with all his heart. But what happened? He didn't know what was going on. And his, listen to me closely, his fear is negative faith. His fear is putting his faith in this realm, which gives the enemy authority to fight him, to come against him. The Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. What gives him power? Our faith is fear when we're fearful and we're giving it to the enemy by that fear and that puts us in his power. Only do not lay a hand on his person, God said. Job 1.5 So it was when the days of feasting had run their course, Job would send and sanctify his children and he would rise up early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of his children for all of them. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did regularly. That means he feared. He feared for his children, which gave the enemy power over his children. Don't be fearful over your children. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. I know we had these imaginations. What if my kids do this? What about this? What about that? You're giving power to the enemy. Don't. The enemy uses our faith against us. Don't give him that authority. Don't give him that power. Job chapter 3, verse 25 and 26. For the thing I greatly feared, Job said, the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. And what I dreaded has happened to me. I am not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, for trouble comes. Fear is faith in its negative form. Fear is faith in its negative form. You're giving place to the enemy when you're fearful. Don't be fearful. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Huh? You have victory. You have authority over Him. But when you get fearful, the Bible says, when that happens, cast down your imagination that fear imagination, because it's going to affect the enemy coming against you. We don't, we want a shield. What is the shield? The shield is your faith in God's word, your faith in what Jesus has done for you. That is your shield. 
Is your world on fire right now? Huh? Is your authority on fire? Because you're giving the enemy faith. We don't realize how much faith, believing God or believing the natural circumstances or getting into fear will affect our lives and everything around us. We need to learn that. We need to be grounded in understanding what that means. If we could ground, be grounded in understanding of what that means, we would give all of our faith to God all of the time, trusting Him. He gives us hope. What does that mean? Hope does not disappoint His hope. If there's nothing He holds against you because Jesus paid the price for you on Calvary, on the cross, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. You're right before God. He's, you're not guilty because of what Jesus did for you. That's what you got to see. That's what you got to understand. Then God is on your side. That means you always have hope. Hope means always to expect good. Think of what that's saying. Well, Pastor John, you don't understand. I'm worried about my kids. I don't think they're serving the Lord. That's what Job said. Huh? And what happened? That fear he gave into the enemy used it against him. Huh? Satan tempted Jesus with the authority he got from Adam. Oh, Pastor John, are you sure? Was that real? It wouldn't have been a real temptation against Jesus if Satan didn't have that authority. He got it from God. Remember, God said to Adam and Eve, have dominion, subdue this earth. You're in charge. Take care of it. And what happened? They gave that authority to the enemy. Luke 4, 5 and 8. Then the devil, taking him, Jesus, up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. How could he do that? That was Adam's authority. And the devil said to Jesus, said to him, all this authority, <coughs> excuse me, all this authority I will give you and their glory. What authority? The one that Adam and Eve gave to him. All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me and I give it to whoever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship me, all will be yours. Uh-huh. And what does Jesus answer? And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it's written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. That's what we need to say to the devil. Shut up, devil. I'm worshiping God. I'm trusting God. I'm trusting God. God has given me authority over you. Resist the devil, and he will flee. How do you resist him? By showing him that you're trusting God. By confessing the word and speaking the word to him. Mm -hmm. What is meant by authority? The lawful right to enforce obedience. The lawful right to enforce obedience. You have authority over the enemy. You have the lawful right to enforce him to be obedient to you. Shut up Satan and get lost. Get out of my life. Get out of my kids' lives. Get out of... of Everything around me, get out of it. The power or rule of government, the power of one whose will and commands must be obeyed by others. That's authority. You have that authority if you're in Jesus and Christ is in you. Royal power, dominion, the right or authority to rule over a kingdom. Basilia is the Greek word. Mm -hmm. You have authority in Christ. Pastor John, I don't see it. What's going on, huh? The major problem in Christianity today, the major problem, listen to me closely, we want God to take dominion. We want God to take authority. We want God to change the situation. Yeah, He can do it, and God wants to do it. But we have the authority to execute judgment. We have authority to bring God onto the scene of the situation. That's what God wants. That's what prayer is. That's what agreement is. That's what confessing the word is. You are bringing Jesus, the word of God, into the circumstance and situation. Many Christians, many Christians look at the situation they are in and then they say, God is sovereign, the supreme ruler. It's up to him, whatever his will is. They do not, then they don't take their God-given authority that we have in Christ. Huh? Well, God's sovereign. Yeah, but God, listen to me close. Wake up. It says every good and perfect will comes, every good and perfect work comes from above in whom there is no shadow and turning. God didn't send death against you. Well, Pastor John, did he send the devil against Job? No, no. Job's fear brought the devil against him. That's right. 
Job's fear brought the devil against him. God gave mankind authority. Job should have known his authority, but he didn't. He didn't. He trusted God. Finally, he saw God and he changed and God rewarded him. We need to look at God, see what God has given us. Use your God-given authority against the enemy. Have you been begging God? Oh, please help me, God. Won't you please? Won't you please help me, God? Won't you please? God wants to help you. But it says come boldly to the throne of grace, not begging, not dragging your feet. And, and re Oh, Lord, I'm so repenting. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's not bold in righteousness. Come boldly to the throne of grace, boldly for mercy and help in a time of need. The righteousness of God in you, the righteous are bold as a lion. Are you righteous? If, you're, if you think you're not, you don't understand the gospel. He who knew no sin became sin, that you may be the righteousness of God in Christ. Your sin has been taken away. It's been nailed to the cross. Reckon yourself to be dead unto sin and born again. Read Romans 1, 8, 1, and 2. Read what it says, huh? Romans 1, 16 says the gospel is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God unto righteousness. What does the gospel say? That Jesus paid the price for your sins. That you're born again right before God. Well, isn't God going to judge me? Judgment was on the cross of Jesus Christ. You come to the door of the cross, you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. His punishment was your punishment. You walk through the door, close the door. You're dead under that law. You're alive under this one. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets me free from the law of sin and death. No more begging, huh? Use your authority. Yes, God is the supreme ruler and the sovereign of all. But God has given man authority. Let me read this again. Yes, God is the supreme ruler and the sovereign of all, but God has given man authority to reign on this earth. You sure, Pastor John? What does this say? Huh? Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more, those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Those who receive, those who receive abundance of grace, abundance of grace says understanding what happened to you at the cross. That's the grace of God. You're accepted in Christ. You're accepted in the beloved. It's not automatic. You've got to receive with your heart and believe with your heart and confess with your mouth. I'm born again. I'm a new creation in Him. I receive it and I believe it and I'm walking in it. Put on a new man which is renewed in knowledge. You know, the whole mess started with a wrong knowledge. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Knowledge of the cross says you're dead to that and you're alive to this realm. <coughs> Think about that. I'm talking too fast here. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. You want to reign in life? I do. Jesus, as a human man, not born through Adam's lineage, was able to walk in man's original authority. That's why there was the virgin birth. The sperm that created Jesus' flesh was God, the Word of God, mixed with Mary's egg and became a human being, 100% God, 100% human. John 5, 26-27. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Man had original authority. Man gave it to Adam, or Adam gave it away to the devil. And Jesus got it back because he's 100% man. He got it back, the original authority. <coughs> Because we are in Christ, we have his authority, his power, and his dominion. Listen to me closely. Because we are in Christ, we are one spirit with the Lord. Christ in us, and we're in him. Mm -hmm. Christ in us, and us in him. We have authority, power, and dominion.
Matthew 18, 18, Verily I say unto you, Whoever, whosoever, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed on heaven. What does that mean? It means you have authority to let stuff go or to bind it, stop it. You have authority. You're going to let the enemy run over your life or you're going to stop it. It's time to stop. Use the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Receive prayer. For where two or more agree on touching anything or gathering in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Through the prayer of agreement. How do we take authority? Through the prayer of agreement. Matthew 18, 19. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Think of that authority that we have. Hallelujah. How do we take authority? Speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. What does that mean, huh? For assuredly, I say to you, Jesus said this, for assuredly, in other words, this is for sure, this is positive, and I'm saying it to you, whoever, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, and your mountain could be your sickness, your finances, your relationships, your children, whatever it is, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. How do you do that? What do you do? When you pray, believe you received it and you shall have it. When do you believe it? When you pray. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. My children are taught of the Lord. They're wise. They're great. My relationship with my children is fabulous. It's great. And I'm confessing that and I'm receiving it. And I thank you right now. It's a done deal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is a done deal. I've received it in Jesus' name. I don't walk by sight. I don't walk by my feelings. I don't walk by my imaginations. I walk by the Word of God. That's how you receive it. You have the authority in Jesus' name. You have the authority. These signs shall accompany those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will speak pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. You have authority in the name of Jesus because it's the power of attorney in a sense, if you understand what that is. You being in Christ and Christ in you, those that are joined to the Lord are one spirit, the Bible says. And just remember that. You're one spirit with the Lord, so you're like Jesus talking. And him talking for you and speaking for you. You have authority in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening. I want to say a few more things. You can go to our website. You can send us an offering. And uh, the website is Victory's Vision, www.victoriesvision.org. Uh, or you can send it to Post Office Box 295, Gilbert, Arizona, 85299. We also have three books. And if you send us an offering of $10 per book, we'll send you these. The first one is all about take it first for help. Take what first? The love of God, the unconditional love of God, that He accepts you. Emergency Faith First Aid is all about the Red Sea position where the children of Israel were on the edge of the Red Sea. And what happened? What did they do? They decided to listen to Moses. And Moses did what God told him to do. And there's five different steps. They did it and they walked across on dry land. Last one is the five L's of love. Shows you how to have a relationship. It's for every couple that's going to be married or married couples. The first one is love is a decision before it's a feeling. Too many people say, well, I don't have the feelings anymore. Well, you make the decision to love, and then you'll have the feelings will follow. Again, we just want to say thank you so much for listening. Join us next week in the name of Jesus. Amen.